In around 7.6 billion years, the sun is going to grow so big that its radius at that point in time is going to exceed the current distance between us and it by around 1.2 times. But here is the thing, as enormous as the sun is going to be in the future, by that time it's actually going to be less massive than it is today. By the time the sun reaches its maximum size, it would have lost around a third of its mass. And because of that, you might conclude that its gravitational influence would lessen on the planets that orbit it. And as a result, these planets would start drifting away from their orbits. Your assumption isn't wrong. That would be the actual case in reality. However, it turns out there are other factors in play here beyond just gravity. By the time the sun reaches its maximum size, it will have outer layers beyond its surface. These layers are very low density layers, but they are dense enough to cause drag effects on Earth in such a way that will eventually cause it to be swallowed by the sun. If these outer layers did not exist, then we can say that Earth has a good chance of surviving. Earth being swallowed by the sun does seem to be the most likely fate of the Earth. However, there are other fates that are still possible. You see, 7.6 billion years is a really long time. A passing star, a passing black hole, the gravitational interaction of it with other objects in the solar system that creates some kind of a chaos effect, we're going to discuss that in just a bit, can change the fate of the Earth. It might be ejected out of the solar system, it might be swallowed by the sun even faster, and it might even collide with another planet. You see, there's an issue when it comes to predicting the behavior of our solar system or any other system that has several gravitationally interacting bodies. The stability of our solar system or any other system that has several gravitationally interacting bodies is subject to a mathematical problem called the n-body problem. You can predict the positions of the planets almost exactly if your period of prediction is not that long, let's say 100,000 years. But as you increase the period of your prediction to more than a few million years, your prediction will start to veer off from what will happen in actual reality. By the time you reach 7.6 billion years, your prediction is unlikely to be anything close to what will happen in actual reality. To understand what is going on, let's take a look at a simple system. Let's say Earth and the Moon. Predicting where the Moon would be in relation to the Earth or where Earth would be in relation to the Moon is not a difficult process, even if the period of your prediction is in the billions of years. Why? Because you only have two bodies that are gravitationally interacting with each other, the Moon and the Earth. But as you increase the number of bodies that are gravitationally interacting with each other, they become harder and harder to predict. Let's add Jupiter in there. Previously, you only had to take into account the effect of the moon on the earth and earth on the moon. Now, you have to take into account the effect of the moon on the earth, the moon on Jupiter, earth on the moon, earth on Jupiter, and Jupiter on the moon, and Jupiter on earth. So things got quite a bit complicated just by adding one body to the system. So imagine predicting the entire solar system and you can see that things get extremely complicated. Any slight variation that you have not taken into account or any slight variation in the future will make your prediction completely wrong. Fortunately, because the sun contains about 98% of the mass of the solar system, does make the prediction process a bit easier, but not by that much. On a blog post on their website, the developers of a game called Universe Sandbox 2 were discussing the problems they are facing in trying to account for the n-body problem in their game. And since their game is all about simulating various aspects of the way the universe works, let's say our solar system for example, then the n-body problem is in fact an actual problem for them. In it, they discuss that they have to correct errors in the simulation that you're taking a look at, otherwise things get crazy really fast. If you increase the time scale of the simulation that you're looking at, of whatever body you're looking at, then errors become extremely apparent. Moons start crashing into planets, Mercury can get ejected out of the solar system, and so on and so forth. What complicates this matter even more is that in almost all simulations of the solar system that were conducted so far, none have actually taken into account the effects of general relativity. You know the thing Einstein came up with, how energy and matter, which is made up of energy, curve the fabric of space-time? This is only one factor. There might be other factors that are difficult to incorporate into our simulations of the solar system and as a result our prediction of it. Is there a solution to this issue? 
One way to handle this is to keep making predictions. Just do them over and over and over again. And include as many factors that you know of that affect the behavior of our solar system. And after you've conducted so many of them, what you can do is come up with a probability analysis, basically say what is likely to be the behavior of our solar system in the future. In 2009, a team was able to conduct 2,501 simulations of the solar system. These simulations were different than any other simulations conducted before because these simulations actually managed to take into account Einstein's theory of general relativity. So these are the most accurate simulations of the solar system to date. These simulations spent a period of 5 billion years into the future. This is before the sun becomes a red giant. If they had to take that into account as well, the simulation would be much more demanding. These simulations took a lot of resources to conduct. They took around 6 months and they used the power of an extremely, extremely powerful supercomputer. In 99% of the simulations, the orbits of the planets have stayed stable. Nothing really changed that much. However, 1% of the simulations showed the planet closest to the sun, Mercury, going a bit crazy. In some cases, Mercury ended up colliding with Venus. In some cases, the Sun ended up swallowing Mercury. And in some cases, Mercury ended up being ejected out of the solar system. The astronomers who ran these 2,501 simulations ran 201 more simulations focusing only on the situations that allowed Mercury to go crazy in the first place. And they found some interesting results. In five cases, it wasn't Mercury that was ejected out of the solar system, it was Mars. In 29 cases, Mars ended up colliding with the Earth. In 18 cases, Venus ended up colliding with the Earth. And in one particular case, Mercury probably thought, why do I need to hire Mars and Venus to crash into Earth? Let me do that myself and ended up colliding with the Earth. Now remember, all of this happens before the sun becomes a red giant. If that was taken into account as well, chances are the behavior we've seen might become even worse in these 1% of the cases. However, given these simulations and previous simulations done as well, assuming things stay stable as they are right now, the most likely fate of Earth is it being swallowed by the sun. Now during the course of this video, you might have been tempted to tell me, hey man, 7.6 billion years is such a long time that life would have been long gone way before the sun becomes a red giant. And you would be right. The sun's radiation output at a certain point is going to be so high that nothing really can be alive on Earth. Right? Well, there is a way to handle that. Have you heard of this idea before? Let's say that we detect an asteroid that is going to collide with the Earth. How do we resolve this problem? One of the proposed methods is to send a probe to this asteroid, gravitationally interact with it, and eventually alter its course to miss the Earth. The same principle can apply to Earth, although you would need a much larger object than a probe, possibly an asteroid, possibly a moon, and you would need a period that is in the millions of years and possibly even longer. If the period is too long, then what's going to happen is that your prediction of the effects of the moon or asteroid on the Earth is going to be off from what will happen in reality. So we might not actually do that. But if we do eventually find a way to resolve this problem, then we may be able to move Earth artificially and save it from the radiation of the sun. However, that's only one method. What do you think? Is there another way to save the Earth? Is there a way to save it from its fate? Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.